Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon for our talk uh, with Josh. Um, we're really excited to have his work here. Um, I think it fits our shop appropriately in that it's totally analog, and he's actually um, doing some really cool stuff that he'll talk to you about working with um, some Polaroid films that are actually out of production. And anyone who shoots pack film um, knows the feeling. Uh, but we're going to ask um, for you just to keep yourselves on mute for the moment uh, while Josh does the talk. And then um, any questions that you have while, while he's kind of addressing, um, please just type them into the chat um, and address them to everyone. And I'll be monitoring the chat. Um, if there's anything that comes up while he's talking, I can relay those questions for you um, to Josh. And then we'll have kind of a more open, casual question and answer um, conversation at the end. So yeah, without any further ado, here's our artist of the month, Josh Casarino. And then anyone that comes up here, you can press submit. Hey guys, uh, it's Josh here. Uh, uh, I just want to thank Treehouse for letting me um, show my work here this month uh, throughout November and um, just kind of want to go through a little bit of what kind of got me into um, shooting film and shooting analog and um, so I guess probably about 10, almost 11 years ago, um, I was gifted a camera for Christmas and I just kind of thought about how um, a negative really could <clears throat> just be like a blank canvas and I could really just put anything on that whether it be like, you know, a double exposure or landscape or portrait or anything like that. And it kind of just like really got me going with that. It got me uh, really doing uh, photography like very experimentally, I guess. And, um, you know, I, I found out that Polaroid had stopped their production in 2008 and the last film that they put out was in 2009. And so in 2010, I started buying up uh, a lot of Polaroid and um, actually massed quite a collection of old vintage Polaroid uh film like pack film and as well as like you know your regular 600 uh film and so i uh i just started shooting it and it was actually it's actually really interesting because you really wouldn't know you know what you paid for whether it was actually going to come out um or work at all and you don't you know like you're just purchasing something in the hopes that like the first time that you like pull through the camera that it's actually going to actually show an image and you know that's it it can be it can be extremely costly to like just kind of shooting old polaroid film and uh you know like for the most part, like most of the images that I've shot, like in this show, um, or sorry, actually on uh, on this camera on the on the Polaroid Land ninety five one ninety five, and um, yeah, I um, I don't know. It's it's like a fully uh, manual Polaroid camera, which. Um, is great in itself like it's not just like an auto focus um flash like you're just like point and shoot kind of camera like you can control almost everything with that camera and uh i guess to get back to the images that i have up 
at Treehouse. So all these images have been shot actually um, on Polaroid, um, Polaroid type 690 and Polaroid type 669. And so like the 690 is a lot more of a warmer, like a warmer, like your reds, your oranges, your yellows. And the 669 is like your blues, greens, and violets and stuff. And so what I wanted to do was to present something that kind of uh, resembled Polaroid's, um, their logo, which essentially is a rainbow. And so what I try to do is find all of my images that kind of resembled from, you know, red, orange, green, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, which is their emblem or their logo right now. And uh, try to assemble something that kind of could follow those lines just only on expired film. Um, and like, I guess all the film that I've shot uh, has been expired or was dated from uh, 2005 to 2009. And so I guess I can actually go through some of these images here. So here, this is, uh, this is Polaroid 669. Uh, this one actually came out really well. Um, I kind of like just shooting, you know, moody, dark images. Uh, this is Polaroid. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Did it work? Sorry, guys. Um, our analog photography store, of course, <laughs> we can't get through a talk without some technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so. And we'll give a little plug for a treehouse here. If you guys do want to um, come and check out Josh's work in person, seeing the installation and the way that he's framed these images um, really highlights that idea of the color spectrum that he's talking about. Okay. All right, sorry about that. So this photo that I took here uh, was actually probably one of the best images that I got out of um, Polaroid 669. Uh, I was out just kind of exploring places to like new places to shoot. And I saw this boat that just started sinking uh, a while back and it was just like super close to the harbor. And so like, I just like brought my friend over to just like cruise with me and shoot. And um, yeah, this is kind of what came out of it. And this, so this is 690, so it's a lot warmer. Um, it's, you know, it gets very undeveloped for sure. Uh, it becomes very orange. And so that kind of like really helped me with my color spectrum. Again, like Polaroid 690, another uh, shot of Polaroid 690, like very warm tones to it. This is again, like this is some 669 um, that actually came out pretty well. Um, you can probably see in the corner where like the development make it all the way. It's kind of a normal thing. Also, like you can probably see like throughout the image and also on the right side of the image where it just seems kind of leaked. And that was a, <laughs> that was a light leak in my camera that I had for quite a while before I actually ended up um, fixing it. Uh, myself shooting the camera that I uh, am actually, all my work is shot through. And again, this is Polaroid uh, 690. Um, this one not so expired, but 
so you're actually getting marlars other than like orange and red and 669 again uh yeah this again is uh 669 as well so you get kind of these really weird swirls um based off of the uh there's a little pack and a developer and you have rollers on your camera so when you pull the film out then it kind of like wherever and however the developer is is like kind of like what you get so you get kind of swirls sometimes through that um yeah there's james <laughs> and uh yeah so that's uh six 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 nine again so these are just kind of the images like i'm just kind of scrolling through um what i was trying to get as far as like a color scheme and everything goes and um yeah that's a 690 again and 690 as well and 690 again uh that's uh some 669 yeah so these are just some of the images that i have um that i'm just kind of going through that are here up at treehouse and you know, I guess I, you know, I don't know. Like, I guess what inspires me to shoot pack film is the fact that you, you don't even actually know when you pull that first tab, if anything's going to actually work, you know, and when it does, and when you, and when you count those seconds to when you can actually pull and peel the film, like it's instant gratification. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Like I love shooting expired film and when it comes out, that's great. You know, when it doesn't, then like, you know, you know that you tried. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, Anyways, if there's any questions, just uh, let me know and we'll, we'll kind of go into like a question and answer period here. Uh, so while well, give to give you guys a second to type up any questions you might have, um, I have a few questions for Josh that I think people might want to hear. Um, so just going through that process, um, I guess a couple of questions is the work you're doing with, with these models. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of your aesthetic inspirations? You know, what, what are your references? What are the type, what's the type of work that you like to look at? Um, and then again, the difference between the films that you're shooting, the 669 and the 690, mm -hmm. when you go into a shoot with a person, with a model, do you have something in mind? Like, is it something in terms of you have a really warm personality, so I'm gonna bring these warm colors out. <laughs> or is it is it whatever's at the top of the pile of the fridge that day? Uh, maybe you can talk about some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um so I get I think that my original inspiration really was it actually came um from trying to start shooting things in Hawaii that people had ever seen and so what i really started trying to do was shoot abandoned places like places that people have lived here their whole entire life that have never seen like they would not even think that it was in hawaii and i shot that for probably two or three years going through every single one of the islands and then i decided to do i decided to bring um you know models into it and you know i just kind of like dark and moody scenes and um yeah so that's kind of what i was what i was going for as far as as far as that goes uh as far as the film choice uh actually it was just whatever seemed like the least out of date and the most on 
top of the fridge, really. <laughs> so, yeah. Is there uh, another question? Yeah, so I'm gonna just step in and relay these questions as you guys type them out. Um, so we do have one from Avery who kind of talks about, says, how do you plan your shots with the unknown how it will turn out? So you, you talked about that. Um, working with expired film, working with instant film, you don't know when you pull that first tab. Um, mm -hmm. So going into a shoot with knowing everything that's kind of outside of your control, what are the, what are the things you do to sort of plan out um, an image? Um, and then another question from Andrew is, what do you plan to do with your work or what have you done? And then do you ever shoot other formats like 35 millimeter, 120? Um, yeah. I know that answer because Josh comes in the tree. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Avery, that's uh, that's kind of tough. Like, I feel like I'm always bringing a giant backpack and also full of cameras, but I'm also bringing a whole entire bag of film. And some of it is a bunch of pack film. And like, I have like just, you know, excess of pack film just in case it doesn't work out which sometimes none of it works out and i'm just you know super frustrated uh but i typically bring a lot of other cameras andrew which is this is kind of going on your question i bring a lot of other cameras to uh, a photo shoot or location um so the my go to well let me let me roll back here a little bit so i'm a camera collector so I have cameras from uh, 1901 till uh, the late 90s. I uh, have like 37 or 38 cameras. Um, and so what I do is my go-to cameras for a photo shoot or, or just going out is actually um, my Pentax 6.7, which is a medium format camera. And then my Contax G2, which is 35 millimeter camera, and my Polaroid 195. And that's typically what I would uh, bring out to a location or to a shoot, so. Okay, awesome questions, guys. Keep on rolling in. Um, so another one that perked up from Andrew when you mentioned that is, uh, what is that camera from 1901? <laughs> oh, uh, so the camera from 1901 is actually from my family. It's a it's a Kodak uh, 3A. So it's oh my goodness, I don't even know what the format is of that camera, but it's yeah, it's um, red bellows, like super old school. Um, but what I've been trying to do is like kind of collect beautiful and also sleek and simple cameras. So I have. I'll, you know, a bunch from the 30s and 40s with pinstripes and and just very simple cameras, some from the 50s. Um, you know, I actually probably have five different Polaroid cameras, large, I have like two or three different large format cameras. And so, yeah, it's kind of, and I actually, I shoot them all. So, uh, which everyone, things like they're just trophies but i have actually shot for film through all of them so even through the 1901 camera which like the only exposure they actually came out from that was a three-hour exposure on my lanai uh in black and white film <laughs> so yeah and then um just staying on the technical note there is a question in there from Akari about your development. Um, but yeah, maybe if you can talk about how you handle development of your roll films or large format films. And yeah, then yeah, also, yeah. what's your process for scanning, both for those and for your, your Okay. Films? Yeah, so, hey, Akari. Uh, thanks for joining, man. Uh, so my process is that I'm actually not really developing my own film these days. Uh, it's seems it's it's a lot of time and effort uh, to actually get through and do that. Um, 
I was doing a little bit of black and white here and there. Like I've, I've done a little, little bit of it, but uh, yeah, for the most part, like I just take it to a local lab here and like get it done. Um, and then I actually scan my own film. Like I, I use an Epson V700 uh, to like actually scan in my own film and like just kind of knowing what the color palette is of that film. Like I try and make the scan as close to you know, what would be captured as possible. So, yeah. Here's questions. So yeah, we've got um, Avery oh. asking about what the oldest film you shot and um, is there any film that's too expired? Is there a point where it gets past? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do I have to close? Yeah. So, um, the oldest film that I've ever shot actually is from, gosh, it was, it's called Kodak safety film and it was from, it expired in 1966. Um, it, I actually shot it, um, when I, uh, hike the stairway to heaven so the the shots turned out really almost even three-dimensional because it was it kind of like the development came out like very strange with that film you know but that i think that's the oldest film i ever shot was uh expired in 66 um as far as uh andrew's question you were asking about how I shot uh, the 122 film. <laughs> I actually had a, I had, <laughs> I had a, an adapter to shoot 120 in it. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, the next question. Yeah, we've got one from Lauren here. So maybe you can read that out for the people. The so the spot. question is, like leaks and physical flaws are a reoccurring theme in your work. What do you feel they add to your image? As a viewer, they strike me as a physical reminder of the uh, risks and alchemy involved in shooting film, like a fingerprint left on an image by the photographer. Um, yeah, that's actually, that's a really good question. Uh, I felt like the years that I shot this camera where I didn't fix the camera and I just let the light leaks go, it added to some images, but it really actually destroyed other images to where I just really, you know, tossed it away. Um, I like that. Like I like shooting kind of moody and dark situations and also like imperfections only add to the image. It only makes it more real. It makes it more tangible to me. Like I, I enjoy it even more. And like, I guess that's kind of why I tried to bring together a show of just, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of expired film. So it's, it's difficult. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating at times. And then uh, sometimes you just pull, you like peel the film and you just are absolutely amazed by the image. And it like, it makes a whole entire day. It makes a whole entire shoot. It makes, you know, it makes everything for sure. So. Okay. So, um, Thanks for the great questions, guys. We're getting to the end of our session here. Uh, so Josh, any closing remarks? You have anything to plug? Any, anything else you wanna say? Yeah, um, honestly, like I would, I would honestly recommend trying out analog photography. Like it really is an enjoyable, experience like it really kind of makes you think it really kind of makes your mind work and it also makes you kind of think about what you're capturing and it like it gives you a different light for like every single thing around you that you're looking at like 
now it could potentially be the frame or it could be potentially be an image, you know? And so it kind of just gives you, I don't know, it gives you, it gives you something, a different way to look at things. And sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes, you know, everyone's stoked about the sunset, but you're stoked about the reflection of the sunset off something else, you know? And um, honestly, like, you know, Bobby and Treehouse, these guys are amazing. Like they have been just helping support my analog habit for years now. And like, I would recommend coming out and and checking them out and like hanging out with them and like listen to some records with them and stuff and maybe picking up a camera and like trying it out. Like it's, it's so worth it. Like shooting analog is, is, you know, probably you know my favorite thing to do so uh i just i thank you guys for joining in and um listening to me ramble about polaroid stuff so <laughs> but yeah cool all right that's gonna wrap it up for us guys thanks again for joining us today and do if you have a chance come down and check out josh's work in person um i think especially with the Polaroids, the pack films. Uh, we've we've been able to see the scans here today, um, but it's really with, with these types of images. It's all about the originals. So if you do have a chance, come check it out and uh, check out Josh on Instagram, website, all all those channels. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. How long work going to be up for? Is it all? Uh, it's going to be up and all the way through November. So until. December 1st or 2nd. Yeah, and we're here 11 to 5 every day. Cool. So Thanks, man. Come on in. Thanks, guys.